No! No! You! But I want to. We got number three coming. No, go ahead. Yeah. Horse race, yeah, Kentucky Derby. He's still there. I'm Marilyn Harris. And I'm Percy Smith, Marilyn's husband. My man. Yep. Uh, welcome to Victoriously Crazy Podcast. Yeah. We are so super honored uh-huh, to talk uh-huh. with someone you definitely know from Victorious. What you may not know is all the other work he's done behind the scenes. Wow. Lane Napper, also known as Lane, the guidance counselor. See, we had that down already, Ben. Bennett did his research. <laughs> Hold on, I, before we start, I, I, I got to put some lotion on. That's just the only thing. But we're good to go. <laughs> yes, yes. Yo, are you were a part of Victorious, iCarly, Drake, and Josh, but those are just a few shows. Lane, welcome. You must have Yay. so many stories to share. Welcome. And we're to hear it, baby. We're yeah. here to hear it. Well, first of all, thank you all so much for having me. When I found out it was for Marilyn and Percy, and of course, <laughs> ben, I was like, let's do this. Oh, oh my goodness. That's so, so cool. um, yeah, I, I, I was thrilled. I was absolutely thrilled. So, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. All right. Oh, well, Isn't thank you. so gracious. I know. I, like I know. And so good looking. Oh, boy. I'll leave that to her. Lane. Oh, I see, I see you. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I see you. Um, First, let's get a little background. Um, At what age did you realize you wanted to be a choreographer or actor? A lot of people don't know, but I was raised and born in Virginia. And uh-huh. there were, I'm, I'm, I'm from a family of six, four brothers, one sister. I'm uh-huh. the last of the boys, but then we have my sister. But as a child, I was very hyper, but I also had asthma really oh. bad to oh. one year turned into pneumonia. So oh. I was actually in the hospital a lot. I mean, a lot. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, when I tell you, Marilyn, being in the hospital bed, it took an act of God just to get me to raise my hand. I mean, it was mm. so debilitating. Wow. So, I, my parents would have me sleep in their room just so they could watch me. Watch you. Throughout the wow. Night so I didn't stop breathing. But um, fast forward, I started just being in the hospital and watching TV all day. Yeah. I just saw the images on the television set and I heard the laughter on certain TV shows and things. And I was like, wow. I really want to do that or you know thought I wanted to Uh and then I saw a a movie called Summer Stock with Gene Kelly and Judy Garland and when I saw him put those tap shoes on and he started doing that tap dance I was like where are those sounds coming from you know it's, it's funny you don't know what kind of images when you're a kid or even adult when you see something for the first time or experience Mm -hmm. it the first time you never know what you're going to take away from that Thank God it was the dance and the acting. That's what really catapulted my interest in all of it. Wow. I love that. So that basically was what your inspiration was for the the dance vision inside of you then, right? Watching these dancers. Yes. And then so from there, you know, the doctors said I would end up growing out of the uh, asthma, Mm -hmm. which is what happened. I I don't have it anymore. Thank God. Wow. Yes. from that, you know, I just I kept remaining active and dance was something I love. So the first class I took was a tap class. I was working construction at the time. Didn't tell anybody I was doing <laughs> I would go, you know, after work or before work. But then it got to be where, um, a, a quick side note, I couldn't afford the dance classes. So what I did is on a Saturday, I went up to this place called Dance Etc. And it uh-huh. was a lady there by the name of Ann Boyle. She owned the studio. And I said to her, uh, ma'am, I would really love to take class, but I can't afford it. But mm-hmm. I would be happy to clean your mirrors and scrub your toilets to, you know, be able to do this. She says, okay, just like that. Mm, just meant like to be, that. meant to be. So I was able to, to get classes. I would clean the studio a couple times a week and uh, work behind the desk got classes and that's really what started all of that you know wow. so. I love that I love that Isn't that, great? that initiative that that you took mm-hmm. to because sometimes we feel like there's a roadblock and we just say let's mm-hmm. take a different path or I find that people who can't afford certain things 
won't even do the research to try to figure out how you can have it. Um, there's things that we want or things that we'd like, but we think it's so far out there, we stop. We stop yes. trying. We stop pursuing it, you know? So let me start my next question. Can you explain how your work led up to Victorious? I was doing television in LA. I, I live in New York, but I was bi-coastal. Mm. While I was in New York, I some of you may know the name Brooke Shields. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, come on, man. <laughs> I'm saying for the listeners, there's a new documentary on Hulu called Pretty Baby. Oh. And she was the first, she was the first young girl to break into that modeling and have that sort of, you know, fame, you yeah. know, with all the stuff going on around her that you could never get away with today. Oh, boy. So it's a really cool documentary, but it's called Pretty Baby. But I, I ran into Brooke Shields. We were taking dance classes together. We became friends. She was inviting me to different things. Mm. I had a chance to see part of that world. She was so gracious and still is to this day. And Aww. she was working on a television show called Suddenly Susan at the time. Mm -hmm. And I went out there. She, she said, if you, I'd asked her, if you ever need me for something out there, let me know. And she said, would you come out to LA? I said, yeah. So I went out to LA to be a stand-in on her show. And for those who don't know what a stand-in is, it's a person who's on the set and you're taking notes for the actor you're following. So if that actor gets pulled into hair and makeup or gets called away for wardrobe, then you step in and that way lights and the director and everything will keep mm -hmm. moving until the actor comes back into place. So I did that for a while and I met this guy who was the AD named Will Bardelli. And Will now works for Dr. Phil. After those different shows ended, he started working for Nickelodeon and they were looking for a dialogue coach for all that. So I got a call in New York. And this is funny thing about life. You never know where it's gonna come from. Oh, that's you true. Know? Like when I met Bennett, who knew, who knew? <laughs> and I have a feeling Bennett and I are going to end up working together or you and I, Marilyn, or you and I personally. I, you know what? I'll, I'll Put accept there, that. Baby. I manifest that. <laughs> I like it. Yes. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I got this phone call in LA, uh, in New York to come to LA. Will was wow. working on a show called All That. He says, you're good with kids. Um, you're good with choreography. Sometimes they need that. Uh, you're acting, you know, so would you do it? He called me on a Friday. I said, when do I need to be there? He said, Monday. So wow. I packed my bags and went <laughs> and I met Dan Snyder and the rest of the crew that week. And it has been a marriage in heaven all oh the way through. God. I worked on all that. Um, they saw that I did some choreography. So I did some stuff on their show. Then from all that led me to Drake and Josh. Oh yeah. It got on the tee, baby. Got to, got to represent. Uh, got then from yeah. there, I had like Zoe 101, iCarly. Wow. Yes, I yes, I see it. Work I see it. it. And, then, and I see Victorious over there. Yes. 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 Oh and, my God. Uh, Dan Schneider called me, uh, uh, called me into the office and he says, hey, I want to talk to you about a new show I'm working on. And at that time, it wasn't called Victorious. It was, it was just the uh, unnamed pilot. And I still have that script. You'd be shocked at how much stuff I have in this apartment. <laughs> so so yeah. what I did is um, uh, I started working. Dan, Dan called me to the office and he says, hey, I'm working on this show. It's going to have a, a diverse cast uh, and I want you to see this. So he hands me the script. He goes, turn to page 13. I went to 13 and one of the characters was named Lane. Dan does that where he will name characters after people he knows sometimes. Um, oh. So I'm reading the script and I was like, oh, and he goes, well, what do you think about that? I said, I, I love it. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> he says, will you do it? I said, will I do what? <laughs> he says, I want you to play that character. Oh my God. And I said, Dan, look, don't play with me, man. My heart ain't strong. <laughs> don't, don't play. So he says, I want you to be one of the characters on the show <laughs> named Lane. You're going to be the guidance counselor. I started crying right then and there. Oh. <laughs> Here's the thing though. I was staying with Will and his family. I left the set, went down to Apple, got a computer for the family. So when I went oh. home, I said, here's a gift. Uh, I want y'all to have this because it, it was a brand new computer. They loved it and everything. 
So anyway, that's how I got the part on Victorious. And from beautiful. there, my life has never been the same. Oh, you're going to have me start crying, man. That's a beautiful that's a story. Beautiful. You can make songs out of the stuff he's been through. You know, I just, I need some, some Kleenex. I just... <laughs> Tears of joy. Tears of joy, Lane. Okay. Well, I got to tell y'all, honestly, I'm shocked that I'm getting through all this without getting weepy. I could, I could let you borrow mine. Yeah. You, you know? Touch him up a little bit. Touch wait, him up. wait, do that again. Do that again, Marilyn. There you go. There you go. There you go, baby. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. you. Oh, he yeah. just took my Kleenex and oh. I handed it up to the screen. He pulled back a piece of Kleenex yeah, himself. 23. I mean, anything. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I, I love that dude. That I beautiful. love that. Oh. And and you you taught me something because um my character was named Charlotte Harris and I just thought it was mm -hmm. a coincidence. My last name is Harris. Harris. My married name Smith, but when I saw Charlotte Harris was my character, I thought, "Oh, that's that's a funny coincidence." Yeah. Sound like he did that on purpose. I know. Wow. We have another question. Uh, are there any specific memories or stories you want to share about the shows you worked on prior to Victorious? Yes, I think uh, two two big. Well, there, there's so many, but one of the the ones that always stands out to me is when we were doing Drake and Josh. Mm -hmm. There was an episode where everyone was stuck in the house because of a big storm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Jerry Trainer, who played Crazy <laughs> Steve. I love yeah. Jerry. Drake and Josh. He was doing a scene where he's, you know, and all of the producers and writers are on one side of the room and everybody else is on the other side. And he's yelling at the TV set going, Dora, you call yourself an explorer? <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> the cast and crew are dying. And I saw Jerry. And as soon as that scene was over, I went over to him. And he will tell you this. I, he, I pulled him off to the side. And I said, Jerry, you have just sealed your fate. And he says, what do you mean? I said, there is no question in my mind that they are going to end up using you on something else. Because Dan is loyal like that. If yes. Dan, Dan, We'll take one person from a show and put them on something else or have them come in and do a guest star something or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's really loyal and he knows talent when he sees it. Amen. Oh, so, I love that. So, so Marilyn, don't be surprised if you get a call, if he's working on something and he's like, hey, I need you on this. So that was a, a fond memory. Um, mm. I did the same thing with Victoria Justice when she was on Zoe 101. She cracked an egg. She was playing this real goth girl. And I remember her mom was standing next to me and I said to her mother, I guarantee you, Dan is going to end up putting her in another show somehow. You know, I just, mm. I just know, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, those, that was a fond one. And then probably you said prior to Victorious, the other one would be I Carly being mm -hmm. able to tap dance with Jeanette. Um, she's just an awesome girl. I mean, yeah. we did that, we rehearsed it. She, she just jumped in full force. Mm. I love, I have so much love for that entire cast. It was just so much fun to work on. Wow, that's so those great. were probably the two, the two main ones. Am I correct that that episode was originally supposed to be in a roller rink? I was a pageant girl? Yes, thank you for saying that. But, but not a roller rink, actually an ice skating rink. Oh. Uh, it would have mm. cost, I don't know if people know this, but Jeanette McCurdy was, or probably still is, an amazing ice skater. She can like turn and bring her leg up behind her head. Oh my God. Wow. And from what I heard is it was just too expensive to rent that ice skating rink for that amount of time for what we had to shoot. So right. they decided they knew that Jeanette tap dance. And so they had me work with her because I'm, you know, tap dancer as well. So originally I wasn't dancing with her. A guy named Scott C, who's a good friend of mine was going to tap dance with her. He flew mm -hmm. in from, from uh, New York just to be there. Wow. And then Dan pulled me aside again and says, Lane, why aren't you dancing with Jeanette? And I said, well, you know, I just, I, I wanna wait for a role that might possibly reoccur or something. And he says, yeah, uh, but I really love for you to do it. I think you should do it. And then I said, well, wait, what about Scott? He's on his way here, I can't, you know? And so yeah. Dan says, you know what? If you dance, I will make sure that Scott has a role on this show. Wow. And wow. If people want to know who Scott is, uh, he played Christopher in the show, 
where he's got that little monitor, that little uh, beep, 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 <laughs> you know, to check Jeanette before she comes in mm -hmm. to make sure she's not carrying any weapons. Yeah, so it all worked out. It was such a blessing that it all just worked out. And people don't know that that was me because I had the hat on and the coat and all that stuff. Ernie. That's the beauty, the beauty Ernie, of yes. entertainment. Ernie was my character. I don't want to deter this, but can I quickly take you guys to show you something in my yes. life? Oh, this is Come your on, podcast. Yeah. You do whatever you want to do. This is like a little tour book. I just have to show you all this. This it looks like luggage. But this luggage is really made of wood. Wow. And these are the stairs that Jeanette and I tap dance on. Oh, There's wow. a picture of the. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. But what we did is. That is awesome. Um, I wanted to do like a Shirley Temple's uh, Bill Robinson number for that. So yes. That's why I thought it would be like a train station routine. And the, the crew, which is so amazing, uh, the, they, the prop department. They build these, but it's wood, and we use these to tap dance on when we did the show. Wow. So when the show was over, I had told Dan, I said, man, I would love that. And he says, you want this? I said, I would take that to my apartment in New York and make furniture out of it. So <laughs> he turned to the crew department and said, hey, guys, when we're done with this, I want you to give it to Lane. So I had that oh. stuff shipped to my apartment, and everybody who walks through that door they immediately know what that's from and they all have to do a picture on it. So it's Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, see if you don't ask, man. You I gotta <laughs> tell you, dude, you you are the first podcast guest with props. Okay. So we're gonna give you props. props we're giving you props. props. In that case, one last one and I'll leave <laughs> it. Oh, oh no, we oh, love man. it. Come we on. were on the set of iCarly and I went out and got this lunchbox, right? <gasps> It's just a regular lunchbox, but it's metal. Yeah. I saw it in like a Target or a Kmart. Yeah. So I said, wait a minute. And I went out and got a Sharpie and I had every one of the cast yes. sign this. So this is a one of a kind. Like I got Jeanette uh, McCurdy's signature. Yeah. Right next, to her. right next to their face. Yep. And this is um, Nathan Cress's. He's very religious and he would always uh, quote a Bible verse. Oh, I love that. I love yeah, that. Cool. And then Jerry Trainer just wrote, keep laughing. That fits him. The lunchbox yeah. was $6.99. Oh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably doubled in value. So, oh, eBay, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you could sell it for a whole lot more the than that. Has been yeah. shown on the podcast. Okay, so how excited were you when you found out you would be um, on screen in the Victoria show as a recurring character. I think you did like 19 episodes using your own wow. name. I think there were probably more. Um, I mean, I nice. don't know IMDb, but I'm, I'm almost positive there was more. But um, wow. that being said, it was just fun. I, I was there all the time. If I wasn't in front of the camera, I was behind the camera choreographing. Mm. Yes. So I was there all the time. There were probably two, maybe, I think two episodes I didn't choreograph. I was back in uh, New York at the time. Mm -hmm. so, um, but everything else, I mean, I was I was happy to do. It was just so much fun, really. Oh, oh that imagine, is so yeah. cool. So do you remember anything about deleted scenes uh, involving your character? Yes. Uh -oh. There was one episode, <laughs> and it's, it's funny, for those who don't know, I have a TikTok which uh, well, I'll talk about in a second, but on my Instagram at Real Lane Napper, there is some deleted footage from the show. So nice, you know, you can find that. But my favorite deleted sh scene was Cat, Ariana Grande, and Robbie. Mm -hmm. um, they both had to. They would sing bad news to people. <laughs> there was this bully who I had expelled, but they that showed up. And I was afraid to go over there and tell him. So I had Robbie and Kat go sing him the bad news. <laughs> and, uh, it, it was funny. It was deleted. But before it was deleted, Dan actually emailed me and he goes, hey, Lane, I'm sorry. But because of time, mm -hmm. we had to delete this scene. Uh, yeah. That was the only reason. You know, you know, y'all know the business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that that half hour television show is, you know, 22 minutes maybe yes. you know yeah. so they gotta they gotta 
cut and trim. So, um, mm -hmm. but it ended up where I still got a copy of it and uh, it's out there somewhere. It's actually, it was on the slap.com and so it's all over YouTube. I remember it, it, it went, hey, Mr. Scary Man, Scary Randy Bronson. <laughs> Yeah, you go, baby. you go, Bennett. I love that about you. <laughs> I love it. So you talked about your favorite deleted scenes. Uh, what about your favorite moments during filming? Do you have any recollection of uh, any of those? Probably there's two. One was the episode Who Did It to Trina, wow. where she was on a wire. The wire snaps. We're trying mm. to figure it out but it was like a little murder mystery because it all took place in my office. Which was <laughs> really cool. And we were, all these characters were in one location trying to figure out this mystery. So that one I had fond memories of. And then of course the pilot episode, only because not only was I in it, but a lot of people don't know. Oh, oh, here's, okay. I'm sharing it with this podcast, right? Uh oh, now. here we go. Let's do it, baby. Exclusive Woo! breaking news. That's use. A lot of people don't know this, but the pilot, the, 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 the very first episode of, of Victorious, originally when she gets up on stage, she's supposed to go to like a junkyard. And Andre, your 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 grandson on the show, yes. Andre's playing a piano and he's like a junk dealer. And so oh. Victoria comes up and she goes, hey, mister, what's all this junk? And he, you know, gives her some sass. They go back and forth. Uh -huh. And she ends up plucking. He, he starts plucking a few keys and she starts singing. And then there's two customers who are there and they start dancing with her. So wow. that original Make It Shine big number, uh -huh. only three people in it, mm -hmm. her, two backup dancers, and of course, Andre off to the side playing the piano. We shot that, we did that whole thing and the network looked at it. Network, they weren't, they weren't happy with it. They were like, look, we want like an MTV style big number. So Dan calls me in the office. He says, Lane, can you do this? I said, let's go. So <laughs> I was able to hire 16 dancers Victoria worked hard. I mean, it was good. And that's also out there, you know. But here's the, the thing. I, I, I don't know if I told Bennett this, but every time Marilyn and Percy, I do choreography for a television show. I always bring my video camera to get the footage in case we ever have to go back. I can remember the steps. I always let the people know, hey, I've got this, you know, I'm, you know. well, I have the original footage oh. to that episode. Oh. No one else has it. Oh my. No one God. else has it. Hmm. It's so bizarre. So I got it where she's dancing. We rehearsed it. It's hmm. her two guys and Andre plucking those keys. Go so, mine. E I mean, <laughs> I got four letters E B A Y. <laughs> e <-B -A> -Y. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's just, that's priceless. Are there any memories of Andre's grandma that you have? Like yes. Oh! Yes. She's so, crazy. The pilot episode, actually. Yes. She's in the audience, and she's looking around and doing all that. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Andre! You know, and every yeah. time she did it, my character would, like, you know, jump back a little bit and stuff. Yeah. But I truly, truly believe, had we been picked up for another season, there is no question in my mind that Marilyn, you and I would have had scenes together because I have a feeling you would have been at the school on Andre's behalf, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, or yeah. I would have come to your house to see how Andre was doing or something. I just know our characters would have connected some way, somehow. Wow. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Yeah. But, I like that. I liked that prediction. And I saw the clip when you came out on stage uh, Matt Bennett, Party 101, they lost their mind. <laughs> it was insane. They lost their mind. Yeah. It was Percy's it's idea to insane. pull me out. Oh, yeah. The, the first time. Yeah, the first time. First time we did was. Anaheim. I, did, I didn't want to come out and he pulled me out. In the it was also his idea to, for me to have something covering my head. The, the second, second time. time, yeah. But the first one was yeah. really funny because all they could see was the hand. 
Yeah. And then I, she would let go of my hand. And I'd be like, come on. And then when she finally came out, oh my God. I didn't expect that. I'll never forget that. It was that, fun. Man. I saw your clip too. <laughs> yeah. The first one really went over huge. I mean, it's just, yeah. yeah. It's been crazy. It's been great. And great. You know, Matt is such a great host. Oh, he is. Yeah, oh, he's something else, isn't he? Yeah. Hey, hey Lane, um, speaking of, of Matt and Robbie, you, you kind of told me something interesting about Rex, right? A lot of people don't know. I came up with the design for Rex. <gasps> oh. Really? Well, well, what had happened was I was at uh, Nickelodeon one day. And Robin Wiener was there and she and I were talking and then Dan found out I was on set. Uh, but it wasn't a work day. I wasn't even supposed to be there. I stopped by there for something, I think wardrobe. He called me into the office and he says, hey, I'm trying to come up with some sort of design for Robbie's uh, friend, you know, his little friend. And uh, <laughs> he, I don't know what show it was. I want to say New York Undercover. There was a Spanish a light-skinned Spanish guy on the show. With the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. He had like uh, big eyes, like, you know, yeah. bright eyes. Yes. So him, he gave me a picture of that guy and a picture that he gotten out of a magazine. So I merged the two together and I drew it with the hair and all of that oh. and um, gave it to Dan and he loved it. And, you know, just, I wish I had that drawing. And I was telling Bennett, I don't know where this drawing is, but if you were to look at the drawing, it looks pretty much like what Rex ended up to be. I had the hair a little different. My hair was more, a little bit more coarse, uh -huh. uh, almost like loose twists a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but for the, for the design, that, that's what I came up with and Dan seemed to like it. And then Rex was born. Yeah. You did a good job because with that design and what you put in yourself, uh, he was kind of a suave ladies man. He had a coolness, Rex, about him that, uh, yeah, I think that might have been you. Yeah, he didn't, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't get flustered at all. That character <laughs> was not based on me in any way. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> that guy was too mean to be me. He was too mean. That, that was your evil twin. <laughs> well, ask me who uh, my favorite character on that show was, I always start with either Victoria, Andre, um, or Rex. I, it depends yeah. on what mood I'm in. Oh, oh, here's another fun fact that I don't think anybody knows. Uh, for, the, for the podcast people out there, there was a show, and I don't know where you guys are exactly in an in, in area, but we have a show, I mean, we have a network here in New York I think it's called Cozy TV. There, there was a show on there called Soap. And Soap, I believe, was in the <laughs> late Jay Johnson. Yes. You know this? I know that show. Well, I know that Matt talked about how like Jay Johnson came to teach him how to work with the ventriloquist. Yes. And if, for those who don't know, Jay Johnson was like a huge ventriloquist back then. And he still probably still does his show. But he and when I saw him on the set working with uh, Matt, they were working on, you know, the mechanics and how to get it to move and to be real. And they were looking Ooh. at footage and stuff. So, I mean, Matt was getting some major, major, you know, mentorship. Training. Yeah. When I found out what he did and who he was, uh, Jay Johnson was actually doing a, a show about his life. And I went to the show that night because of that. Mm -hmm. And it was great. He, he talked about puppeting and making all of these things. but. You know, he had a character too, uh, named Bob, who wasn't, he wasn't nice either. So yeah. <laughs> I think at some point, again, if we had gone another season, maybe Jay Johnson and Bob and Matt Bennett and Rhett. <laughs> they would have had conflict. Or dad, he could have played his dad on this. Like you never know. Oh man. Lena, do you thought much about storylines for your character, or even dance numbers that you would have loved to choreograph or just things that could have happened in a fourth season, or I guess technically, fifth season of uh, Victorious, if it had been renewed? I actually spent, uh, you know, kind of pitched some of these to Dan. One that I thought would have been absolutely amazing is that Cyclewitz and Lane double date with their dates. And the oh. four of them go to a restaurant and my date ends up liking Cyclewitz. Like he's got all the attention. As mm. kooky and as crazy <laughs> as he is, 
he turns out to be this lady man. I'm just kind of sitting over here, like trying to figure all this out. You know? <laughs> um, so I thought that could have been something. I also thought uh, one episode is where they follow Lane through the day and uh, find out that I do take classes and work, you know, do dance classes and stuff out there. I like that. One of the writers actually told me what he wanted from my character was to find out that I go through anger management classes. <laughs> oh. And, and here you are giving guidance to kids. <laughs> right. And so he said in one of the episodes, what he would have loved to have seen is that uh, I have anger, <laughs> anger issues. <laughs> well, did you know that originally the spinoff for Jeanette was going to be where she played a guidance counselor? I didn't know that. I didn't know she was going to play a guidance counselor. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know she was going to do that, but that's awesome. Not to bring anything down, we got to ask this question. Uh, we were all shocked when the show ended. Yeah. What was your reaction to getting the show getting canceled? Well, I didn't know about it. I was actually in Harlem. I could tell you exactly what sidewalk I was on. No, seriously. No, I was no. walking, and my friend Joe texted me, and it said, Hey, Lane, mm. I can't believe that about Victorious. I didn't answer it, you know, and then I get another one. Lane, I can't believe about the show. So I'm seeing all this stuff. So I called him back. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, Victorious is canceled. I said, they couldn't have canceled it. I'm one of the actors on the show and I'm the choreographer. Yeah, Two like weeks went by and I'm still trying to like, what is happening? What mm. is happening? What is happening? I ended up calling Dan and saying, hey, Dan, I keep hearing this rumor about the show. Like, what's going on? He goes, yeah, I'm sorry. I should have probably called you myself. You know, I think, I think in situations like this, I think, I've never been in a situation like this. I always assumed the network would call you. Or, or your agent or someone, someone yeah, would I call. don't think they even knew because the, mm. the, the show itself didn't tell anybody, you yeah. know. Your story is so similar to mine. Um, I've always had um, a connection with the fans of the show. I would even give some of them my phone number and, and you know, talk to them yeah. about acting and different things. So one of those type of fans actually called me frantic and like, Marilyn, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. And I was like, do about what? And he's like, Victorious was canceled. What are you going to do? And I am like, I have strong faith. I said, I don't know. I guess I'll talk to God and see what he wants me to do next. Yeah. He's like, oh. <laughs> So it was like everybody. And I ended up doing stand up comedy as Crazy Cool Grandma. Mm -hmm. That's where my Instagram name comes from. I, you know, I just Stay woke crazy, up. Huh? Yeah. You know, you continued to work uh, with dance. You came back for Sam and Cat and uh, what, Henry Danger and Game uh, Shakers. And you've done so many other things. I mean, outside of Nickelodeon, choreograph, uh, teaching. Do you want to talk about some of the other projects uh, and what you're doing at the moment? Yes, I'm still dancing. Uh, I'm with Titans of Dance. Now, for those who don't know what Titans of Dance is, y'all need to get on board because, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy in a good way because the, the, uh, the, the person who runs it uh, takes five choreographers to different cities every weekend. Wow. Um, and these, the choreographers, I've all done television or tours and stuff. Like for example, one of the instructors, Molly Gray, she played Giggles and she played in all the high school musical movies and stuff. Oh, so wow. She, she's one of those Disney girls that the, the fans know her, uh, like they know me from Nickelodeon. So she's one of the choreographers. Uh, they bring in different people who toured with like Rihanna and Taylor Swift and things like that. So. It's a great thing. So I do that on weekends. I travel. We start that in September. It's called Titans of Dance. So hopefully you can come and see that. Uh, yeah. The thing that I'm working on that I'm most passionate about right now, I'm with an improv group called Pulling Focus. It's five improvisers, myself, Patrick Williams, Carisha Redman, Johnny Maldonado, and Matt Mack. We do some crazy improv, but it's family fair. You know, if you oh, bring cool. kids or whatever, but it's usually adults. We start with a big dance number. I bring in a choreographer. The choreographer will do a dance number. Uh, and we bring in somebody to sing, either from Broadway or stage. So it's like, I tell people, if you took the Carol Burnett show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm. And Saturday Night Live, and it had a baby, Pulling Focus would be it. Okay. We have an upcoming show 
on the 23rd of this month of, of May, okay, right here in New York City. I'm gonna be uh, advertising for that on my Instagram and TikTok uh, this weekend. So be looking for that. But that's what I'm the most passionate about right now is, mm. is doing this. And I still have auditions. I like that though, pulling focus. So you've been an actor and a dancer and work with all kinds of performers. Do you have any advice for aspiring entertainers? Yes, don't get caught up mm -hmm. in the stuff. And what I mean by the stuff, stuff you don't need to get caught up with. Show up, be on time. And when I say on time, if your call time is eight o'clock, mm -hmm. you are there by at least, at least 740, mm -hmm. no later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least you want to be there. And you would have already eaten, did everything you need to take care of. So when you walk into that set or that mm -hmm. opportunity, you're ready to go. You're not playing mm -hmm. catch up at that point. Yes. So, be on time, be alert, don't get caught up in the stuff. And what I mean by the stuff, um, the negativity that you might hear, um, well, they should be doing this for you and they should be doing that for you, you know, especially yeah. if you haven't arrived yet. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, until you have a name. Don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> like that. You are a guest on that set. Your job is to go in and do the best job you can, be prepared as best you can. Try mm -hmm. to relax. Try to get some sleep the night before. Oh, yes. yes. Stay hydrated. You don't want to be a problem on the set. You don't want to be a problem on the set. You don't want to be a problem on the set. They got enough Amen. to worry about. Yes, yeah. right. Yes. You don't want to bring sand to the beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, the love traffic that. was horrible. We live in LA, man. <laughs> yeah, Lane. What people don't know is I was the dialogue coach on those shows all wow. that uh i carly direct josh where i would help the actors with their lines mm -hmm. but when i'm in new york i helped the people on broadway i helped uh cast tours you'd be shocked at the people who've come in here because i'm an acting coach as well wow when i'm in new york or even in la when i have the time in fact hold on please uh -oh. hey, hey here it comes here it comes here it comes over the years every actor i've worked with I have them sign this book. Nice. Oh, my oh look at that. You would be shocked at, at how many people from Disney, how many people wow. from, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, there was that show called The Americans. A lot of these kids are on Broadway or done that. things and they're still out there doing it. One of the people in here has just won his third Emmy and I'm being serious oh about Oh my that. goodness. Lane, I just, I have to tell you because we're so appreciative that you gave us so much insight you know we're, we're fans of your character and not to mention all the all the countless roles you know you were you were on screen on drake and josh and then we talked about your role as ernie on icarly um so you've been on screen and we know that you were the choreographer for victorious but something i want to say about being a dialogue coach is i was always such an admirer of the work that you did that adam tate did um that's so crucial literally i mean for an actor oh, yes. to deliver the lines and everybody, especially being a stand-in, everyone on that set is a hero. Everything that you guys do, every role. I mean, it doesn't happen without the choreography. Literally everything that you guys do. But as I sit here and I think about all the pieces of the puzzle that you helped bring to life, it, it really, it's really special because um, you made such a difference on that show and so many other Nickelodeon shows. That's true. That's right. He's basically the border of the puzzle. Without the border, you can't put in the other pieces and, and get the picture. Yeah. You know well, what I, I mean? I appreciate you saying that. And I have to tell you, uh, because it's us, and I feel very safe with you all here, um, I think, to my knowledge, I was the one of the longest working African-Americans being a dialogue coach. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I've done it for years. And I think, I think, I was the first one for Nickelodeon. I think wow. that's the way I heard it. So if somebody's out there and knows different, I had heard that I was the first um, African-American dialogue coach that Nickelodeon had, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't know. Um, it's a hard business to break into. And a lot of uh, positions that people have, they were grandfathered mm -hmm. into it nepotism, from, like from, that. yeah, nepotism from, from the crew to the cast to there, just like the way he would use actors from previous shows and stuff. It's, um, it is a blessing w when you're able to keep yeah. going, keep working, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't be if you weren't you good at nice. your job. Yeah, if you weren't, doing your if job, you weren't nice if you weren't and if you likeable, weren't good, you wouldn't be. Wouldn't. Well, I would always say that, you know, Dan had a big role in that because every time I got ready to do something where they would ask me 
about hiring. They would ask actually, oh, quick, another fun fact. That uh -huh. episode of iCarly where that guy Zeke, he played Zeke, he goes, your podcast, I mean, your, your show shouldn't be called iCarly. It should be called You Purdy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, Bennett, do you remember this? Uh, the iCarly episode? Um, it's loading in my mind. The episode is called I Dream of Dance. It's where they had to watch all those dances. Oh, yeah, one of the very first episodes. Yeah, it was actually number three. I can't believe you remember that. Nice. The guy who starred in that, <laughs> his name is Eric Nelson. He was the one I was telling you, just won, like, I think he's won three Emmys. He's on mm. that TV show now. Uh, you know Yellowstone? Oh, um, yeah. They got a spinoff coming up. A spinoff. 18, I think it's called 1883. Eight, 1883 or 1869 or something. It's going <laughs> way back. He's one of the stars on that. And we're still very good friends to this day. But I'm saying... Uh, Dan would always, when he say, hey, Lane, do you know somebody who could fit this role? You know, they would come to me on certain occasions. Wow. Wow. I would always say, let me find out. And I would always lean into him and say, you know, can it be diverse casting? I was very oh, comfortable of seeing other you. images out there. Or at least yes. all they could do is say yes or no. That's right. So you always, don't get it if you don't ask. I would always lean into Dan and I said, um, is this diverse casting? And he would yeah. say, of course, like, you know, so, and the same thing with those dancers. Anytime I got ready to hire dancers, I would lean in. Um, this can be a diverse casting, right? Because you never know. But plus, yeah. you got to remember way before COVID, you know, we didn't really talk about all of this until, you oh, know, yeah. sadly, George Floyd and all of the other exactly. things. Exactly. This was something Hollywood we didn't talk about. But mm -hmm. it kicked open the door. It yes. did. Yes, we're starting to see more representation. Yeah. But Dan, in my opinion, was always ahead of that curve. He by, was. By bringing people in of different ethnicities and things. If you could do the job and you were good. Yes, Talent. Yeah. That's all he cared about. Mm -hmm. yeah, I always like to, I always like to you know, pay homage to him on that because I didn't see a lot of those people at that time doing it. Mm. And and you have to you have to stay focused. And if you can bring someone through that door with you. I kind of feel like you're obligated to do that because you wouldn't be there if someone before you hadn't done the same thing. It's, it's like a journey. It's a journey. I agree with you 100%. But then I also think, too, some of us might be in a position where, you know, we're grateful for that job. Oh, you know, yeah. We're grateful for that job. We've got it. So we might not be thinking about the next person. We're yes. just humbled and happy that we have it. Yeah. But if if you're in a situation where you can start, you know, putting it out there, then I yeah. absolutely agree that we we or at a higher level, like if you're yeah. Denzel yeah. Washington or Samuel Jackson mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, wow. this is all wonderful and everything, man. Yeah. It's been a great, great podcast. One of my favorites for sure. Especially yeah. when someone has so much knowledge as you, man, and we yeah. appreciate you. Thank we you. really oh. do. Thank you. And uh, we know you post amazing content on Instagram and TikTok. Where do fans need to go to see more content of you? Those are the two main ones. I don't use Facebook and all that. The only two that I use is Instagram. And you can mm. find me on Instagram at Real Lane Napper. And then over on TikTok, just TikTok. And for those Victorious and iCarly fans, I do a lot of stuff. I show a lot of um, uh, fat, uh, what do you call it? Um, memorabilia from the shows. Uh, like a lot of people don't know, Victoria's had glasses. They had glasses, drinking glasses. Oh, yeah. They gave them to us for Christmas. <laughs> still yeah. Still got my suit right in that room. Yeah. And cards. You know, the fans would go crazy for this. So you can find a lot of that content on my TikTok. I do some dances on TikTok. And um, yeah. Well, uh, Victoria's Secret Crazy podcast can be found on Instagram, yes, YouTube, mm -hmm. and TikTok. Talk, so uh, be sure to subscribe, That's right. comment, like, and share. And, you know, we love reading the comments. I know there's going to be a lot of comments from this podcast, <laughs> oh, you yeah. know. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah. If anything should become like where they have questions or want to know this or that, I'm more than happy to pop back in at any time. Yeah. Anytime Marilyn, Percy, or Bennett reaches out and they say we need <laughs> you, all I have to do is say when and where oh, and yeah. I'm in. 
Oh, oh God. my Thank God. You. Thank you so, so much. Yes, love you, man. Do. For real. Well, you know what? We love you, but we're about to get a little crazy, right? As we yeah. act That's out here. right. It's time yeah. for Andre's grandma acts out. Yeah. So Do get it. ready. Yeah. Deal with grandma. Yeah. Now, the thing is, I have no idea. She never tells me what's going to go down. So it's just her right now letting us know what's yeah. going to happen. Being so, crazy, being Andre's grandma. Go. I'm going to... Um, ask you i'm gonna come to you and i'm gonna ask you to teach me uh some dance moves that i've seen in <laughs> some movies but i'm gonna be totally confused about the name of the movies of and, and what's involved and i may even ask for your guidance on some things since you are also known as a guidance counselor all right i'm reading my magazine until <laughs> i hear that door knock i'm in my office that's right roll oh. Excuse me for barging in. Oh, uh, hi. I, 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 how, how can I help you? Look, I heard you teach dance. I heard you a guidance counselor. I heard that you handsome. That's true. But I need to be taught some dances. I got a list of some things I've seen and I want to learn how to do it. Now, my first one is footloose. Okay, I, I can help you, but you're going to have to get off of my foot first. You're standing a little too... I'm loosening up your foot. Isn't that what foot loose is? Isn't that what it's about? No, um, if you could just step back, I, I, I'll help you any way I can, but right now I can't even move. Look, I like it because the dude with the meat name, Kevin Ham, I like ham. I want to learn about foot loose. Okay, uh, okay, so um, Footloose is a movie. The next one! Dirty dancing, which I call flirty dancing. I can jump on shoulders, I can stick my legs out, I can twirl. Uh, um, you're getting really too close for me right now. I'm getting a little uncomfortable. If you could just take a step back, I'd be happy to help you any way I can. How can I get on your shoulders to twirl if I step back? Uh, uh, oh, um, oh, okay, uh, uh, okay, uh, climb up, uh, ooh, ah, okay, uh, all right, oh, yeah, this so you just so good. Oh, that this feels so good. Yeah, well, You're maybe strong. to you. Strong, <laughs> you strong. Okay, I'm gonna I'll push you down up. now. I'll jump her down, I'll jump her down. Ah, uh, woo. You okay? You okay? You've I'm been good. working I'm out. Good. You've been working out, huh? You've been I'll, working I'll be, out. I'll be fine once I catch my breath. Okay, so so what else can I help you with? Stomp the yard. I was stomping my backyard the other day. I killed a gopher. It felt kind of good. I want to learn how to stomp the yard. Okay, I tell you what, I would really appreciate it if you didn't stomp. That's just the name of the movie, you know. So it, it was more about intricate stuff that they were doing with their arms and their legs but no one really stomps. So How hard. am I supposed to stomp with my arms? Um, that don't make no it sense. Was the are movement. you sure you are a dance counselor? Um, uh, uh, Flash uh, dance. I tell you what. Flash dance. How, how about this? I got a chair. I got water. Flash dance. Uh, uh, wait, wait, you're, you're going to have to get up out of that chair. I can't have you in the chair in my office. Could you please get up? Uh, I need the chair for flash dance. Do you by the chance have a bucket of water? Yes. Oh, stay right there. Let me grab it. It better be clean. I'm going to throw this on you. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Splash! <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,